The symbol of the Aquarian Age, as it appears in all the ancient zodiacs, is of a man bearing a jar of water. The message of that age is one of unity, communion, and our relationship as brothers and sisters, because we are all the children of the One Father. To this age, Christ pointed in His instructions to His disciples when He told them to go into the city, and then He said, When ye are entered into the city, there shall a man meet you, bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he entereth in. St. Luke. The reference is undoubtedly to the future period wherein we enter into that house in the zodiac. Now that house is the house of the Aquarian Age, and it's called the water carrier. And wherein also we shall all sit, every one of us around the world, we're all going to sit at the same table in unity and brotherhood of man, and we're going to hold communion with one another. That's the new age. Being born in the Piscean age, Jesus, through his mystical teachings, was preparing us for the Aquarian age. So we now stand on the threshold of this Aquarian age. So you've got to take up your cross and walk as a disciple of love into the light of a brand new world. The old age is dying away and the new age is at hand. So this isn't a meditation, but I invite you to close your eyes and just listen to this beautiful uh, narration of the five initiations of the Christ. So just begin with the breath. Just take a nice inhale and exhale and settle in. I want you to listen with the ears of your heart. Just know this. If you're listening to me, you're a disciple of love. And so you've chosen a radical path. As a disciple of love, you've chosen what's called the narrow path to reach the level of the indwelling Christ. Now the narrow path are initiations that you must go through to master the levels to reach the mountaintop. So on this path you will climb the mountain of you by enduring five mystical initiations as demonstrated by Jesus the Christ and when you complete these initiations you will be able to shout from the mountaintop you'll be able to claim as Jesus did when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. I and my Father are one. In fact, you'll demonstrate in everything you do and in all that you're being, you will demonstrate that you are a living expression of God on earth. So breathe, in. <laughs> take a breath. That's beautiful. Just take a breath and receive these initiations as we go from darkness to light. So the five initiations are, are as follows. The first one is the birth. And Jesus says it very clearly, or it said in, in the Gospel of John, he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So this is your first initiation. You've got to be born again. You've got to become something other than you are now. The second initiation is the baptism at Jordan. And this is the baptism to which John the Baptist referred us, telling us uh, it, that it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit and of fire, and it must be administered to us by Christ. And that's from the book of Matthew. The third initiation is the transfiguration. So this is all about perfection. Perfection is for the first time demonstrated and the divine possibility of such perfection is proven to the disciples by uh, Jesus the Christ. The command goes forth to us and it's saying, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. That's also from the book of Matthew. Next, number four initiation is the crucifixion. This is really called the Great Renunciation. 
it has many lessons of sacrifice and its call is to the death of your lower self the complete death of that lower nature and this was the lesson which saint paul knew and the goal toward which he he strove he said i die daily it's the death of the ego he said for only in the practice of death daily undergone can the final death be met and endured and that is from Corinthians 1 the fifth and final initiation is the resurrection and the ascension and it is the final triumph which enables you the initiate to sing and to know the meaning of the words O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory and that too is from Corinthians 1 so Let's begin with the first initiation, and it's characterized by the birth of Jesus the Christ in Bethlehem. You too are a divine soul. You've got to come to the recognition that you really are what God made in his own image and likeness. You've got to accept that for yourself, and you must be willing to be what God created, to know that, yes, you are definitely an outpouring of divine will. You are a beautiful stream of pure love consciousness direct from the mind of God. You must be willing to integrate love into everything, your thoughts, your words, and your deeds. You've got to be dedicated to the Christ within you. Jesus said, you've got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And he also said, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, there's no shortcuts to the ascension path. It is truly a radical path. Now remember, this is the narrow path. So you've got to be obedient to uh, your Father, to your Creator. You must be loyal to truth because to master this first initiation is really to become a disciple of love. You are choosing love over fear. You maintain faith and you trust at all times that you are the beloved of God and you come to realize that everything is working together for good without exception therefore there are no exceptions in the command to love you are being called to love which is to extend everything that God is so as you integrate love into every fiber of your being, you are preparing the way for the second initiation, which is the baptism. So you do a lot of work bringing that love in, sharing that love, extending that love, making sure that, you know, working on changing those thoughts from fear to love. So we just take a moment here in prayer as we say, Heavenly Father, increase in me the desire to be under Christ's control. Strengthen my willingness to act as a disciple of love and to realize that I am one with absolutely everything exists. Father, hear my prayer. You must be purified. That's This is it. The second initiation is portrayed by the baptism of Jesus in the River Jordan. Now, he was 30 years old when he was baptized by John the Baptist. And that number 30, the significance of that number is it represents the purification of the three aspects your physical body that must be purified in fact Jesus when he went on the second initiation he was in the desert for 40 days and he fasted so the physical body must be purified you must purify your emotional nature and the mind your thoughts must be in alignment with truth your thoughts are creative and you've got to come to know that they are whatever you think and whatever you say is a great big power surge that goes out and creates form at some level. We have to become aware of that. So you, you renounce this lower emotional self because that self is ruled by the ego's thought system. The lower emotional self is filled with materialism, jealousy, pride, lust, greed, anger and 
all kinds of negativity. So this is a very difficult initiation because you're going to have to look at the depth of your self-hatred, which is the ego's thought system. You've got to see all the many aspects of yourself. They, they are reflected out into the world in people, situations, circumstances. So you've got to look out and see that these people are thoughts in your mind projected and you've got to accept that these so-called people are mirroring unconscious guilt where you think that you have turned your back on God. So in this initiation, you are exposing every last bit of darkness and this really is the beginning of forgiveness. You are bringing that darkness up, you are rooting it out and giving it to the light. So to master this initiation, you've got to be submerged into the watery realms of your negative emotions deep down in the psyche where you are holding unconscious guilt. It has to be ex exposed because it's holding you hostage. You need to be raised up. In the second initiation, Jesus was lifted out of the water. And when he was lifted out, it signified that all three aspects, his body, mind, and, and um, uh, emotional body were purified and matured. And at that point, he stood before the Lord God of his being, and he heard this booming voice speak to him, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. This was the baptism by water and fire. The Holy Spirit descended upon him, and the channels to the divine were now open. This is what happens when you're baptized by the Holy Spirit and you come under Christ's control. This is spiritual maturity. And being identified with the Christ, that brings you to a place where you are able to communicate with the spiritual realms in order to complete your mission. You will walk with the angels. You will be in touch with the ascended masters. You will be lifted up. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Matthew. In the parable of Jesus, after the second initiation, he was taken by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Being born into a body, you're going to face tons and tons of temptations. Three times Christ was tempted in the wilderness and three times he resisted. He faced the evil in his own humanity and he emerged victorious. So it's a rigorous a path you will be tempted non-stop so you too you're going to be in a battle between good and evil wrestling with the ego there's going to be many temptations and they will become more and more subtle because the ego never uh, tires it's a trickster it's relentless there are ego traps everywhere to entice you you'll be tempted to sell your soul for money to sell your soul for fame or worldly power, but you've got to stay awake to these subtle temptations so that you too can emerge victorious. And finally, you know, Jesus was tempted by the devil and the devil said, hey, look what I can give you if you give up who you think you are. And Jesus said, uh-uh. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. Jesus demonstrates the power of Christ and says to the evil, to the so-called devil, you shall not tempt the Lord your God. He was clear. He was on the mountaintop and he was clear. He knew that he was this beautiful embodiment of pure light direct from the mind of God and that's what we've got to know so you've got to endure you must be steadfast and vigilant only for God and the kingdom and you know when Jesus knew who he was he he had no more personality he didn't need to be applauded he gave all glory to God the battle was over Jesus had made his decision and as a disciple of love and a second degree initiate he chooses to become a son of light and love beautiful and that's exactly what you're doing walking this narrow path 
Heading straight to the mountaintop in the third initiation, Jesus demonstrated the transfiguration after spending many, many years in loving service to humanity. Jesus really was a humble servant. So as you walk the narrow path in mastery of the third initiation, you're going to have to overcome any remnants of egotism within the self. Jesus achieved this state, and he's saying, watch me, watch me. I'll show you what love is. He gave all credit to God, and he knew that all power belonged to God, and all glory belonged to God. He said, for I didn't speak of myself, but the Father who sent me. The Father commanded me what to say and what to speak, and just as my Father told me, so I shall speak. The struggles with his personality were over. When you turn your life and your will over to the care of God, you will you will be filled with light and you will be unstoppable in this world. So in this third initiation, Jesus took Peter and James and John and he brought them up to a high mountain alone. Now the high mountain is your third eye. It's up there in the upper house. And on this mountaintop, the so-called mountaintop, he was transfigured before their very eyes. His body turned to light. His clothes shone and became white like snow in such a matter that men on earth cannot make white. It was brilliant, luminous light. And then, to the surprise of the disciples, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah, and they were talking with Jesus. In this third initiation, Jesus became so conscious that he could communicate with the ascended masters. Moses and Elijah. Moses was from the age of Aries, so he was from the so-called past, and Elijah is from the future. He was communicating with these ascended masters, and so shall you communicate very directly with the ascended masters. And as a third-degree initiate, Jesus would go on to demonstrate that there is no death. Thus, for humanity, Christ stood revealed in public view as the expression of God. There is for you, for me, for us, no other goal. So we bow again in prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray for spiritual maturity. May I continue to purify my personality, ego desires, and be trans transfigured into light as was Christ Jesus. May I be lifted to the level of the indwelling Christ to fulfill my sole mission as a light worker. I am ready to walk with the Holy Spirit in service to humanity. Dear God, I give you all my abilities. I give you all talents and gifts to be used to glorify your name. Thank you, God. Amen. Now, the fourth initiation on the narrow path is the crucifixion at Golgotha. That's about transforming darkness into light and being crucified by being crucified on the cross, the wooden cross of matter. The lower carnal nature, as St. Paul said, must die in order that the higher divine nature may show forth in all its glory, in all its beauty. That lower self's got to go. It's got to die in order for that higher self to manifest on earth. Christ had to die in order that once and for all mankind might learn the lesson that by sacrifice of the lower emotional human nature, the divine aspect might be saved, to show us the nature of what that saved life looks like. Christ came to demonstrate to us the quality of the eternal self, which is in you. It's in every man. That's the lesson of the crucifixion and the resurrection that a lower nature must die in order that the higher may be manifested, and the eternal, immortal soul in every man must rise from the tomb of matter. Jesus said to his disciples, This is why my Father loves me, because I lay down my life so that I may take it up again. No man takes it away from me. I lay it down of my own will. Therefore, I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. This command I received 
from my Father. That's from the book of John. From the Son of Man to the Son of God, Jesus progressed through the initiations, a radical path of self-transformation. In view of the public, Jesus achieved initiate status by showing us the way. Hanging on the wooden cross, the cross of matter, he realized that he accomplished his soul's mission. As he hung on that wooden cross, he said seven statements. He spoke. The first thing he said was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. St. Luke. Then he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. St. Luke. His third statement, Woman, behold thy son. Then saith he to the disciple, Behold thy mother. St. John. His fourth statement, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? St. Matthew. His fifth statement, he said, I thirst. St. John. His sixth statement, he said, It is finished. And his seventh statement, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And the gates of heaven opened with his consciousness, and he ascended to be with his Father. I and my Father are one. This fifth initiation is illustrated by Jesus' resurrection and ascension. Having the lower consciousness crucified on the cross of matter, you, as you do this, will stand ready to be resurrected into a newness of life. The ascension into fifth dimensional consciousness is the beginning of this new age, the Aquarian age, that Jesus came in the Piscean age preparing us for this new age. Christ is risen. Love is not sentimental. It's not an emotional state of consciousness. Love is everything and love is all-encompassing. Love is all there is. You understand, as St. John said, if we don't love our brother whom we have seen, how can we love God whom we have not seen? Jesus' message was love all, serve all. Love your brother as yourself. This fifth initiation is the atonement where you know for sure because you have raised your consciousness to the level of the indwelling Christ, which is very high vibration. You are now saying, I am not the body. I am spirit. I am spirit. And as that, I identify as the beauty of God, as the light of God, because I have fulfilled the will of God. In the book of Revelations, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth has passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city a new Jerusalem coming down from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with earth humans, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and the very God shall be with them and be their God, and he shall wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor wailing, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Revelations 21, 4. This is your Easter time. Take up your cross and follow Christ. Follow the path of the narrow way, which needs really leads to new life. This truly is the way to heaven and to the peace of Easter in which we join in glad awareness that the Son of God has risen from the past, the Piscean Age, and has awakened to the present. Now he is free, unlimited in his communion with all that is within him. And to you who are listening to these words, on earth peace and goodwill toward men. I love you. I love you. Happy Easter. Amen.